We only have 15 minutes, so I can't. We only have 15 minutes of, of time footage. On here? No, that that can be put on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so our first stop today is going to be TASC, which is in the B building, and that houses the Disability Service Office, as well as the Tutoring and Academic Center. Um, the Writing Center is located upstairs, as well as the Math Lab is located upstairs. So, just wait for me, Yes? Yes. Seven. Hello. <laughs> and we're currently in the G building. Has anybody uh, been to this building already prior to this experience here today? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We have the enrollment services in there, which will take care of all of your billing um, things, items that you have to take care of. If you need to register for classes and don't have a pen number, you can do that in there as well um, during the paper and they'll give you a carbon copy of it. Upstairs is the nurse's office as well as enrollment services. Here we have our welcome center. We have an ID office upstairs as well as in the K building. Cafeteria is located in this building. We just left the seating area for the cafeteria. Gym is located in this building. Athletics is upstairs. The Senate office is upstairs as well as a uh, portion of student services is upstairs. Any class passes need to know some information, you go inside the Welcome Center. I'm sorry. All of the computers are available for student use. We have computers located here. We have computers on this side as well as there's some computers in the enrollment center. The first week of school, they usually have printers um, connected to these computers so that uh, students who haven't printed their schedules can do so. Oh, I know. I know it. Oh, great. Yes. Come on in. Room is very big. Big room. I hope you don't mind us uh, videotaping your room. No. Not at all. <laughs> Hello, Bill. Hello. How are Sorry. you? <laughs> Hello, news lady. Hi. <laughs> um, this is uh, where we go for any help that you need in any of your courses. Um, the tutoring this is pretty much where most of the tutoring happens. Uh, for instance, you can usually find me at that back chalk put over there helping people with math all day long. That's what I do. Um, if, uh, if you need an appointment, what you would do is just come into the room. We're sitting at the front desk here. Um, you just check in. You ask them for an appointment for whatever course you're having troubles with. And what they'll do is they'll match you up with uh, whatever times you're available. They'll find a tutor that teaches uh, tutors for that subject and, it's, and are available at the same time. Um, and that's pretty much it. What you would have to do is you have to come in at least a day before. We'd like to have at least a 24-hour notice so that we can set up an appointment for you. That way we can call the tutor and let them know you've got an appointment with so-and-so, 3 o'clock for math, 114 or something like that. Um, and you can schedule appointments up to usually about two weeks in advance if you need to. Um, you do have to have been in your class at least once if you want to schedule an appointment. So after you have your first day of classes, you can come in if you think you're going to have some troubles with it. You're allowed up to two appointments per week per subject. So if you're taking a full four courses, you could potentially have up to eight appointments for a week. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. So does like, one tutor like, um, do just that one subject or like... Uh, do you have the same tutor for like different subjects? If you it all depends on, on what they feel comfortable tutoring in. Like me, for instance, I do all the maths from elementary stuff all the way up to Calc 3. Um, but something like English or history, I don't touch that stuff. Okay. So it all depends on what the tutor is comfortable with. We've got some tutors that tutor history and bio, some of them that do chemistry and English. It all depends on what they're, what they're comfortable with. Now, is there a, um, you know how sometimes if you set up an appointment and you fail to keep that appointment, is there like a punishment that you get from it? Like if you get two, you're not allowed to schedule appointments. You have to go ask if they have availability that day or? Usually what will happen, it, it, it varies from, from tutor to tutor, but for the most part, if you miss two appointments, 
um, you'll have to speak directly with the tutor to make another appointment with them. And if you have a standing appointment and you miss two of them, they'll usually remove that standing time out and that hour will be open to other students. So you might risk losing that appointment that you had reserved. Right. Now, what, what are the times that you can schedule appointments and the latest that you can have? The tutoring center is usually open from 8 to 8. So, 8 in the morning till 8 at night. So, we got a good 12 hours for you guys to uh, schedule an appointment. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Introduce us to the staff that's in here so we are familiar with yeah. the names of the people who are here. This is Bill. He's another one of our lovely math tutors over here. He's been oh here no, the battery's dying. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> years now. Well, they're giving me five anyway. Oh, they're okay. saying seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting it off. This is Holly here. She's part of our lovely desk staff. They work very hard to keep this place running. This is Bev. Hi. Another part of our desk staff. Uh, back here we've got Ellen. She's the most important person in this building. She gets everybody paid. She does our payroll. <laughs> we love her. Um, I'm Jen, too. This is Jen. She does the payroll, too, and she does uh, some tutoring as well. She's accounting our, business classes. Yes, she's our, she's our important accounting person here. Right. And there's also Ron, but he's doing the tutor training right now. He's the big guy in charge. Sweet. Thank you. No problem. And the homeworks, what we do is we scan on the curves world. In the curse room, what you guys do, you put it into uh, MP3s, and for MP3s, you listen to it on special um, devices that you end up buying. You know I mean, or just a regular uh, um, discs or an MP3, or what you have is a thumb drive. Put the material on it, and what you do is that you learn from it, and then you, know, you do your homework from it, and from there you take the tests, and it's very helpful. All you have to do is show some documentation that you're disabled. You speak to Cindy Paul Parasol, and she's the one who will help you in the session into the program. Okay, guys. Yeah, now, um, you're the one who uh, who determines who should have um, more time on tests and stuff like that. No, this is just the no. assistant technology, just technology assistant. office. This is the office is just the office is down the hall. Right. This is the office is just from the from what, when you speak to them, they come to us and we scan material for you, but you have to show some kind of form of, you know, disability, you know, mm -hmm. some people have a little bit of this, a little that, if you have documentation, That's good, I didn't want to like jump story to story, so we finish it off with you, then we can go to something else. Okay. Somebody else is going to take control of this one. So who's going to take control? <laughs> you are. <laughs> Not me. I, it's horrible. <laughs> Someone have a question for me? Um, I don't. Um, are you the one, thank you, are you the one determining, um, who can, who, you know, it's longer time and, and all that stuff. Yes, yeah, so this morning you heard Joe talk about some students that with learning disabilities getting extra time on tests. And if a student comes in with an IEP like you had mentioned, or with documentation of a learning disability or a different disability, maybe a mental health issue that's impacting on learning, maybe a physical disability, a visual impairment, deafness, um, we would determine based on your documentation what you're eligible for. And many times the classroom accommodation might be something like a note taker or looking at technology that's going to help in the classroom access what you're learning. But then there's also some accommodations for testing, so you may be eligible to have extra time. Some students should take a test outside of the classroom environment because it's too distracting. Yeah, it's small um, you may need to take the test with software again to make things accessible. We would determine that based on your documentation and then your individual experiences in each class. We would tailor the accommodations to each class. Some classes have more online material than other classes, so we wouldn't just say, you know, this is how it should be for every class. We just sit down with you, look at your syllabus, and really talk about how the instructors run the class. Um, but every student who receives services here does have to have a documented disability mm -hmm. and we're not the ones who do the testing to get that documentation but we can also give you some resources in the community to try to get that documentation you know from a physician or from a school psychologist or, or whatnot. Does it's that suggested, yeah, it's suggested that you should um, get the documentation provided before you start your classes that way um, everybody's on the same page, your teachers and mm -hmm. So it's better that way. It, it, each of you are here for the first semester, and you do suspect that you're going to need accommodations. Before you leave today, it would be nice for you to make an appointment with one of our learning specialists so you could start the intake process. Um, once you get your syllabi next week, 
you're going to want to be able to be at the point where you can start getting accommodations. Right. And unless you start activating the case here and talking to us about your disability, we're not going to really be able to do all that in one appointment very yeah. quickly. It gets very busy at the beginning of the semester in here, and so sometimes it can even take a week or two to get an appointment. Okay. So you will want to do that as soon as you can. We would be working with you to, um, as a part-time student with a disability, see if there's some transition we could offer you, some support, and some mentoring. At the moment, we don't have as many active mentor coaches that you might have had in the past, but we are working on expanding them. What is available for know. them if they become, if they participate Probably a good in the program or want to become two hours is that? Coaches? Well, you know, two minutes. If they, I'm sorry, what? Oh, there you sorry, go. Sorry, no, I'm just trying to, like, limit it. That's Go. fine. Fifteen minutes. You too. Um, if you were interested in becoming um, a mentor coach, you would talk to your learning specialist. If you think that's a service you would benefit from, we could try to individually um, select someone who would be really beneficial for you. It's nice to talk to someone else who has a similar disability, if you do have a disability, and learn from their experience. Yeah. Right now, that, pro that program is not as formalized as it was in the past. We're really um, hand-tailoring it. So talk to your learning specialist if you, if you have the opportunity to. Thank you.